Hey everybody, how's it going? Brilliant uh, evening last night, photographing uh, the uh, the seashore there. The light was just absolutely fantastic. And today it looks like we might have the same conditions, although it is a little bit cloudier. So now and then there'll be a sprinkling of rain and then uh, the sun will come out. So fingers crossed for tonight. Now, in the meantime, We've come across this fantastic waterfall. You can see in the background here, that's the old man of store in the background. And then this beautiful waterfall right here with lots of green moss on it. So I decided to come up here and, and take a few close-ups of it. Uh, the old man of store, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother uh, photographing it on this trip. Part of the problem is that it's a morning shot. So to get up there, I'd have to get up really early to hike on up which isn't necessarily a problem. The big problem is, is that I don't have a tent or anything and my hotel is about an hour's drive from here. So I mean getting up at like two o'clock in the morning, driving to the base, hiking up for an hour and then waiting for sunrise. And I'm just not really prepared to do that. I don't think it's really worth it, to be honest with you. Uh, there's lots of other things I'd like to photograph instead. And this being one of them, it's, it's really cool. So I'm just waiting for the uh, the sun to be a bit more subdued. Uh, just waiting for it to go in front of the sun. <laughs> I, th I think the, the sun was frying my brain at that point because what I meant to say was I was waiting for a cloud to pass in front of the sun. Okay, carry on. And create that really beautiful soft ambient light. In this type of light, uh, sunshine, it's a little bit harsh. And I just noticed there's a coach just stopped, so now I've got to wait for all these people to get out of the way. Oh, God. That's the problem with coming to popular areas like Isle of Skye. Just so many tourists. Well, I guess I'm a tourist as well. I guess that's one of the things I, I take for granted living on Vancouver Island. Although there's lots of tourists, it's a large area, so it's quite easy to get away from the crowds. But here... Uh, not so easy. <laughs> okay, so over the years, a number of people have asked me, how do I get my images to look nice and soft or have that soft quality? And the simple answer is, is that it really is all about the light. So whenever I photograph uh, a subject such as this, a waterfall, I much prefer personally to have the light uh, subdued or uh, in this case, uh, you know, cloudy, cloudy conditions. And the reason being is that it really cuts down on that range of contrast from deep, deep shadow to the brightest highlights. See, as soon as you have bright sunshine on, on anything, you have a, a, a point of light that is very harsh. So it creates very harsh shadows and it makes your subject look very harsh. So what I'll do is I'll take some shots in, uh, in direct sunlight with a polarizer and then I'll take some without that harsh light. So every time a cloud goes in front of the sun, I'll take some more images. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. And I'll just post the raw files, I won't do anything to them. And then the final image, what I'll do is I'll post one that I processed. Generally speaking, when it's overcast, uh, the light tends to be uh, a little bit cooler or bluer, so I'll warm it up a little bit. And sometimes I have to add contrast rather than try to take it away. So I'll take the images and then I'll post them and you can see the differences for yourself. As you can see, photographing this waterfall in uh, direct sunlight doesn't work that well. The biggest problem is just contrast. Uh, even though I exposed for the brightest highlights, in this case, the uh, the water, especially the water at the bottom there, uh, it, that's exposed fine. And anywhere where the sun is hitting, the problem is the shadows. Uh, we have these deep shadows because the contrast is just too great. Now in this next image here, 
uh, a cloud uh, when in front of the sun, so we have this uh, more subdued light. And you can see all of a sudden that it's opened up all the shadows, uh, the, the light is more even, and it's just easier to work with, especially with this subject matter. And that's why I like uh, flat lighting or, or kind of overcast light. It's because I'm able to uh, control the, the contrast after the fact much easier and also bring attention to certain details in the photograph. Whereas in harsh sunlight, uh, you're, you're kind of limited. It, it just doesn't have that soft quality that I like uh, in that type of lighting. And lastly, here is the processed image. Of course, this is all uh, to personal taste. I've darkened the edges a little bit and brought more attention to uh, the, uh, the middle of the frame, which is what I do with 99% of my images. We interrupt this delicious curry moment because we've got an announcement. We've only gone and put together a workshop to the Isle of Mol. Bosh! This is gonna be six days, six nights. We're gonna put you up in accommodation. You're gonna be staying in a beautiful place on the Isle of Mull. It also includes- Transportation. Transportation, we're gonna drive you around. What else? Food. Yeah, we're gonna give you all of your meals. You don't have to pay for a single meal. And what kinds of things will we be shooting, Gavin? We're gonna be shooting Bronze Age megalithic standing stones, absolutely tremendous. We're gonna take you to Fingal's Cave on the Isle of Staffa. Massive basalt columns with crashing waves blasting into that cave. Ooh, <laughs> it's juicy. It sounds exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> so there's that. What else are we going to be shooting? We're also going to be shooting twisty, gnarly oak forests. Oh. And if the bluebells are blooming, we're going to get some gorgeous bluebell forest shots. What else is there on Maltish? There is a really great waterfall with these twisty oak trees around Ooh, it. Oh, that beautiful double drop one. Ooh. Yeah. All you got to do is get yourself to Glasgow. We're gonna pick you up there, drive you to the ferry, drive you to the Isle of Mull, and you'll be staying in a beautiful setting for the next six days. And you don't even have to hide in the trunk. Well, if you eat those pickled eggs, again you will. We're making this a really exclusive workshop with only 10 participants, so if you wanna get on this workshop, jump on it. And when is it? It's the first week of May, 2020. Hope to see you there. <laughs> what is that? Where's it going? So for this evening's uh, evening shot, we've come out to a place called Neist Point, or Neist Point, I believe it's called. And there's a beautiful uh, peninsula with these massive cliffs on the side. And at the very end of the, of the uh, peninsula is this uh, quite old uh, lighthouse. Now it's quite windy and 
we were really hoping that the clouds would stick around a little bit but it's gone completely the opposite direction the clouds have cleared right up so the skies are just pure blue except for in the distance here we have some clouds so unfortunately the skies aren't going to be terribly interesting this evening I think it's going to work because even though the sky is just blue the frame is more or less going to be filled up with just cliffs and the lighthouse at the top so just waiting for the Sun to go down a little bit more the reason why I'm facing this way is because it's very windy I'm trying to uh, get the microphone away from the wind but as you can see the cliffs down behind me here uh, it's just yeah it's really quite something I might try and go down to this point at some point I think I can get a view of the lighthouse from down there I'm not sure yet <laughs> Once again, the weather gods were kind to us in Scotland. Now, it would have been nice to have a few clouds in the sky, I must admit, but I can't complain too much because it could have gone the other way and I probably wouldn't have got anything. So I was really happy with what I got considering how lovely the weather was. <laughs> For this shot, I didn't do an awful lot. Uh, now I did expose for the the highlights. Uh, the side of the the lighthouse was quite bright, so I exposed for the whites in the lighthouse. And of course, everything looks a little bit underexposed. Uh, but it's very easy to bring those details back up in uh, in Lightroom. And I also warmed it up just a little bit. It was looking a little bit cold because, of course, we have all that blue sky and that ambient light uh, cools down everything considerably. Now for the second shot here, the clouds did roll in a little bit, but not really enough to, to make that sky that interesting. Uh, I did try to jazz it up a little bit by dragging the shutter. And what I mean by that is just uh, giving the camera a long shutter speed to try and make the ocean look a bit more ethereal. But overall, I was, I was pretty happy with the images. As I said earlier, dramatic light is always appreciated if you can get it, but it doesn't happen that often. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you enjoy the content of my channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks ever so much. Bye for now.